the MBA blueprint. So we started with why one should do MBA. There were seven reasons I talked about. Then I talked about how to do MBA. So everything related to entrance exams and percentile and all these things we talked about. What next? Now that's an interesting thing. Mera I am Ahmedabad ho jayega kya? Will I convert? I am Ahmedabad. The answer to this question, my dear, is not uh, simple. It depends on your profile. Profile means your academic and non-academic standing in life. In simpler terms, it is about your scores in 10th, 12th and graduation plus your work experience in months. There are other things also associated with your profile. We'll talk about those also. But when I talk about initial shortlisting, these are the four things that matter. Today, I'll try to clear your selection criteria related doubts so lucidly that you will become half career counselors by the end of the video. I'm Ashish Chug and welcome to the third video in the series of MBA Blueprint. Winning profile for IAMS. Today, we will understand academic and non-academic profile according to IIM Ahmedabad's criteria. Because come on, if we want to reach high, we must aim for the highest. Then, I'll tell you that how the same thing can be used for other B schools and how these things are different for a fresher or an experienced person or a gap holder candidate. A lot of people ask this question, what about somebody who is currently not occupied with anything other than CAT preparation right now? Maybe you will get the answer in this video. And finally, I'll tell you what you can do, what you can do, action is also important na, to improve your existing profile along with some caution to help you balance your profile building and your CAT preparation. Please subscribe to our channel. It will keep you updated with the relevant videos. So to get a call from IMM Dabad, you need to meet sectional and overall cutoff. It is a good idea for a general category student to aim for 85 percentile in all three sections and an overall 95 percentile to increase the chances of getting a call from top six IMs. In fact, here is a little snapshot for all the categories. Now take this thing with a pinch of salt because let me tell you that cutoff is the minimum eligibility criterion. But if you meet the cutoff, it is not necessary that you will get the call. The higher the percentile, the better are the chances. Additionally, you need to have good score in 10th, 12th, graduation and some work experience as we discussed earlier, which is known as your profile. This thing profile has 35% weightage to your shortlisting score. And this shortlisting score is also known as composite score. This score decides whether you will receive the call or not. Now this is where it becomes interesting. Look at this carefully. In 10th class, highest score for the composite score is awarded to a candidate with more than 90% marks and that's for all. But if I talk about class 12th, if you have humanities, your highest score will be reached at 85%. While in science and commerce, it is 90%. <laughs> now between science and commerce, commerce gets you a better score at 75% than science stream. So if Ashish has 71% in 12th class, take a look at this. Then Ashish in humanities will get 8 marks. Ashish in science will get 5 marks. And in fact, Ashish in commerce will also get 5 marks. But if Ashish has 80% marks, then commerce Ashish will get 8 marks. But science Ashish will get 5 marks only. Every college has different criteria for this. You can check their respective websites later. So 12th class is sorted. Let's now talk about graduation. Now this is interesting. IIM Ahmedabad has classified graduation degrees into six academic categories. Let's take a look at those academic categories. Four are, you know, quite sort of important and uh, uh, sort of very deciding in nature. So first category number one is your medicine. All the degrees related to medicine, allopathic, Ayurveda, both included. So your MBBS, BAMS, both are part of it. Second one is all finance related certificates such as CA, CS, etc. Third one is commerce, economics, finance and management related degrees. Okay. Don't confuse your second category with the third degree. Third degree is talking about finance degree. Second category is talking about finance related certifications, professional certificates. And the fourth one is agriculture, engineering and related degrees. Now, again, just to give you a perspective, listen to this carefully. A CA Ashish with 64% marks in graduation will get 10 marks for composite score. 
but an MBBS Ashish with same score, 64%, will get 5 marks. Then, engineer or agriculture Ashish at 64% graduation will get 2 marks, while Ashish with BBA or BCom or economics degree will get 3 marks. What do we understand from this? If you are in graduation, study well, get a good score in your upcoming semester. Now you might be thinking, what about the other two categories? Well, they are quite diverse that way. Fifth category is fashion, law, rural studies and other similar kind of uh, uh, programs. And anything that falls outside of these five categories is category six. Finally, what about work experience? Again, <laughs> it varies greatly for B schools, but for IIM Ahmedabad, it is like uh, the more the merrier. So for Ashish, who has one year of work experience, he gets zero score. But if he has more than 36 months of work experience, he gets five marks. Between that, it is less than five. So there is a formula also 0 0.20 into number of months of work experience minus 11. So you can calculate for you. What is step two of your profile building? <laughs> if you are thinking about leaving your job for preparation, think about what difference can one or two or three months make for you and take your decisions accordingly. Try to loop in a mentor. Discuss with some people who have gone through the similar kind of thing. Not your friends because they more or less have similar thought process as you have. But yes, before taking such a crucial decision, <clears throat> think carefully. Fun, right? Now there is one more factor that contributes to building your composite score for shortlisting. Your gender. Basically, if you are a female, you are slightly more favored. Now I know some of you might be thinking, why God, why? <laughs> this is not justice. I didn't know that. Or I also didn't know that, you know, I should have probably taken humanities in 12th class or non-engineering or non-commerce courses in graduation. I also didn't know that my marks will matter in future. After all, I was grown up with the idea that a piece of paper cannot decide my future. It turns out it can and it does. So let me tell you something, my dear, and actually it will ease your anxiety. MBA is a place where you learn less from books and more from how you deal with the challenges amidst different people through various assignments there. So good colleges try to ensure that the environment is as heterogeneous as it can be, yes, without compromising on the overall quality of the batch. So it is not like that if you are a woman, you will surely get an admission to IIM Ahmedabad. No, you will have to prove yourself during the interviews. In fact, after that also, there are two years for you to prove yourself. And if you are not worthy, you will not be able to stand anyway. Let me give you a very simple and rather lame example, but it will prove my case. Imagine you are in a B school and you are supposed to work on a project concerning improving the sales of sanitary napkins. Do you have a better chance at understanding the issue with women around you or not? So if the batch doesn't have women at all, you are not really working in a truly real time simulated environment. Here's another one for you for academic diversity uh, I'm going to talk about now. Imagine you want to work on annual report of some company and you do not have CAs or BCom guys around. Will it be difficult for you or easy for you to deal with sudden questions that can prop up in my mind regarding financial data, especially if you are not coming from that kind of a background, right? So in my opinion, as long as the merit and quality is ensured, academic, professional and gender diversity is a welcome step. Anyway, Overall, now this is interesting, 65% of weightage is still CAT score in IIM Ahmedabad. Lot of people think, re, 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 re. I'm not a woman. And people make a big deal about that we are gem, you know, general engineer male, because that, that sort of gets uh, uh, slightly fewer marks. But you don't have to worry about it because if your CAT score is really high, so even if some compromise is happening on the scores on your profile level, you can still manage that. All right. Still not convinced? So here is a Brahmastra for you. Life is not fair, bro. Deal with it. Now that you know it, you can work accordingly. When you will share this video with your juniors, they will have a better chance at understanding it. When you have your kids or, you know, uh, so many other kids in your family who would look up to you to take some mentoring, you would be more vigilant towards their studies and guiding them. 
you would ensure that they don't fall for that nonsense called, hey, a piece of paper cannot decide my future. No, 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 no. So here is a simple table to help you see the approximate weightage for top six IMs for initial shortlist call. Now this table, my dear, can change, but not by much. So you can consider this thing for your understanding easily. Feel free to pause the video to have a look. All right. Now, shortlisting is not enough. You need to get selected also. Na? Hey, I got a call from I am Ahmedabad. What if you don't make it to I am Ahmedabad? So for that, other elements of your profile are also important. In fact, once you are in B school, your summer placements will also take into account your extracurriculars, your co-curriculars, NGO work, certification, international exposure, national or state or district level competition, zonal competitions, etc, etc, etc. Here is a quick snapshot of what B schools normally look at. Very interesting. And this is more or less an approximate weightage that I have given to all these. But of course, it varies from college to college. So what is step three of your profile? What you should do? Dude, do whatever you can to work on these elements. Improve your profile right now. Don't wait. This is extremely important for your PI because in the final call, PI personal interview has a weightage of close to 50%. Take a look at that, this one, right? So unless you have a strong supporting profile, unless you can explain your candidature, you will find it challenging to prove yourself in the interview. But you know, see, don't worry again. I'm just giving you this information not to alarm you, but to prepare you. It is all about preparing well. And we have a very robust GDPI program, which prepares you to win. But about that, we'll talk about sometime later. Now, here are a few of the things which you can consider. So if you are in college, now this is for college specific people who are currently studying. Good CGPA is very important, especially if a couple of semesters are still there. Courses or certifications or, you know, uh, research paper projects, etc. All these things are also important if you can take part in that. Competitions you, sh uh, you must, uh, uh, you know, take part in. All these things build your profile. On the extracurricular front, again, your hobbies, your positions of responsibilities, volunteering with NGOs, doing the internships, etc, etc, all these things matter. What about if you are a working professional? Then, again, skill building courses are important, courses of certifications, awards and recognitions will be very important. You must know everything about what you are doing in and out. Working for an MNC, a brand, a specific good brand also will be good. Then uh, uh, learning new skills, technical skills, technical skills especially would be a great asset. What about if you are in gap period? Then internship or subject specific certifications will help. Uh, especially the skills related to the subjects in MBA like marketing, operations, HR, finance, or skills such as data analysis, Excel, coding, AI related courses, all these things will be great for you. An interesting question that you might ask me now is that uh, TK, you have told us uh, uh, you should do this, you should do that certification, all that. But where to do the certifications from? There are so many websites available. So I'm going to recommend three great sources to you. There are many good sources also. So many people prescribe that. Your mentors can also prescribe that. I'm not against that. This is something that I believe is more or less a balance of what uh, good things can be given to you, what all uh, these uh, specific places can provide to you and at what cost, okay? So it's a balance of that. So first I would rate as the Swayam portal of Government of India. Very interesting, quite cost, cost effective. Go to swayam.gov.in. Now this Swayam portal is basically a, you know, a collection of really good professors from really good schools. IITs are there, IIMs are also there. There are various other schools also. And they provide you knowledge certificate on uh, practically every single thing that you can think of. So here you can really build your uh, skills and at a, at a very, very low cost. In fact, studying at Swayam is free. Only the certification requires some money. The exam, if you clear that exam, then you know, you get the certificate. The second one is Coursera. IMS has a tie up with them, uh, which gives you 60%, up to 60% of the discount on various courses. You can visit IMS Coursera page on Google for more information. Here is the link which is given to you. So one, one more thing I'm going to tell you that see, even if the tie up ends up someday, this is a great source of learning because so many, again, good schools are here uh, and uh, the certifications will always bear the name of the school. Not that you have done it from Coursera. So that is also interesting. Plus quality is also ensured. Yes, uh, it is slightly a bit less economical than Swayam, which is fine, right? And the third thing is, uh, 
LinkedIn and Google. Now this is very interesting. But before that, I'm going to tell you what kind of courses you could do. See, in, if your graduation stream and current professional experience is way different from what you want to do after MBA, then do a certification course related to what you would want to do after MBA. For example, if you are an engineer who want to work in a finance sector, so do a certification in finance. If you want to do something in marketing, then go for a marketing related course. Digital marketing, elements of marketing, fundamentals of marketing, marketing research, blah, 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 various are there. Now let's come back to Google and LinkedIn. They also offer a couple of free certificates, very good quality certificates that you can consider. And paid certificates are also there. Uh, in fact, for LinkedIn, I guess you will have to buy their premium subscription for LinkedIn learning. Uh, sometimes they give it uh, for free for a month or something like that. I'm not their ambassador, but I find it really good. So I thought I should give you my recommendation. Yeah. Another interesting thing I would like to tell you is that see, while building your profile, don't forget one important thing in your mind. You are building your profile as a peripheral thing, as a supporting thing for your CAT exam score. So it don't try to do it this way that, hey, let me build a very decent, very decorated profile and uh, let my CAT score go to dustbin. Now, nah. then nothing is going to happen. Nothing will matter. So always balance it out. In fact, think about it this way. If there is a certification you can get uh, after 50 hours of the program, go for that instead of the similar kind of certification that you can get after completing 200 hours. You might not be having 200 hours at your disposal, especially when you are near CAT exam. Another interesting thing is that say if you get an opportunity to be a volunteer or a participant and you also get an opportunity to be a position of responsibility holder, go for POR and not for the simpler uh, positions that way. Right? So choose the right activity, choose the right position, choose the right time because you have to ensure that you know, there has to be a return on investment on that, isn't it? Another interesting thing I'll tell you is that, uh, uh, see, when we are doing any course, it is all about balancing that with your CAT preparation and the goals you want to achieve within the specific period of time. So if CAT is only five months away, you might want to pick up fewer profile building things, especially uh, the people who are really not doing well on their profile, they might want to go for profile building uh, uh, things at this stage. But if you are say one year away, pick more and complete all these things early. Certifications are very important for people currently taking a gap from their studies or jobs. People who are freelancers should also go for something, something, if they can. Because freelance activity generally is not considered work experience. I hope all these things helped related your profile. In the next video, I'm going to talk about various specializations and careers that can be pursued as MBA. Subscribe to our channel, share the video, and we'll meet again soon. MBA Blueprint for you.